All right, here we go. This is the major escalation we are watching for in the Six Bowl, Armageddon, the war in Gaza. Okay, guys, what we seek to do is prove on this message on this channel that we are in the end of days and we will look at the uh, scriptures and let the scriptures interpret themselves. You will see very clearly as we do in this presentation that the Gaza war is definitely in the minor prophets. As you see maybe from the title, we have Zechariah chapter 9 and we have Amos chapter 1 discussing this war. Now, uh, first off, we are saying clearly we are in the sixth bowl. Sixth bowl, when the sixth angel poured out his bowl or vial upon the great river Euphrates, the water thereof dried up. Euphrates is dried up right now. And I saw uh, to make dried up to make a way for the kings of the east. Okay. And I saw unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. We saw precisely on the first day of the Feast of Trumpets, we saw in Mexico, they released these, you know, frogs, aliens, okay, on um, corpses on precisely that day. So some of these prophecies, guys, are very, very accurate to the day. We'll look at them, we'll show it to you, but for they are the spirits of devils working miracles to go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Now, Armageddon, is already going on, Armageddon is already Ukraine, and you can see it is the whole world, okay? So there's going to be places in fronts of the war that are all over the world. It's already started, it's already World War III, it's already Armageddon, but once we arrive at this sixth bowl, we know that we will have multiple fulfillments, and that's exactly what we're seeing, okay? To gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, behold, I come as a thief, Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments. So this is Yom Kippur. Um, least he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered him unto, the, unto a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Armageddon is two Hebrew words combined. Har, which means mountain, and Megiddo. It is a place. It is a valley uh, mentioned in the Old Testament. So that is a place obviously in the land of Israel. Okay, so we would have war. Yes, it's, it's going to go forth in the whole world, but it's going to be in Israel, okay? And you gather them together the place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, okay? So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at something so simple. Some of you have such a hard time understanding prophecy. I'm going to do something so simple. I'm going to read the Bible, and I'm going to show it to you on Google Maps, Quickly, before we go to the scriptures and we go to Google Maps, um, I strongly encourage you to use these documents all the time in your studies looking for the second return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here on LelandJones.com, as you can see. And the diagrams I want to show you, I just want to show you how to find the information. You go to Video Courses, click on Charts and Diagrams at the bottom. It's going to bring up Charts, Calendars, and Timelines. We are going to click on the Revelation timeline. This, we'll click on this, and this is going to bring us um, this view. And what this is, is takes the 14 years of the apocalypse and breaks it down into sections. Now, what we're doing is we're looking at the Great Tribulation. Now, you can see that it is this year, 2023, many years ago we you know, publish this information, and now here it is coming to pass. We saw many things in the fifth bowl come to pass. So the, um, the beast, his 42 months expired, and his seat in his throne, okay, was darkness. Okay, that's the fifth bowl. Trump, the Antichrist, concluded his 42 months with his arrests. Um, the indictments coming, uh, so many. Then, um, this time period is Passover, 2023. This time period is the seventh month. So then we get the sixth bowl. It is Armageddon. It is the frogs. Now, yes, some of you may wonder, is there some significance to the eclipses coming up? Yes. Each eclipse marks a seal, trumpet, or bowl. Okay, and we have a partial lunar eclipse in the eighth month, 
um, there are actually two eclipses coming up and they're marking Armageddon. So we were watching, we knew there would be an escalation of Armageddon. Was it going to be Ukraine? What is it going to expand? It is the Gaza war. Okay, here we go. On one side of the screen, you can see we have set up Zechariah chapter 9. And then on the other side, you can see we have Google Maps. And first off, guys, as we read this, we want to make it clear that this prophecy is an end of days prophecy. It is in, clearly talking about the second return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why this war is exciting. It says it clearly. Verse 8 I will encamp about my house because of the army. This is the Yahweh's army, Lord of hosts army, because of him that passed by, because of him that returns. Verse 9, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your kings comes to you. He is just having salvation and lowly. He is riding upon a donkey. A colt, a fowl of an ass. This is Christ coming on his white horse. Clearly, that's what this is talking about. He is coming. It had an aspect in his first coming, yes. But the second aspect we can clearly see in verse 13, where it is um, talking about the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Okay. Verse 13, um, and he has raised up the sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. Now, amazingly, Greece has sent 5,000 troops to Israel to assist in the war against Hamas. And he made you as a sword of a mighty man. Yahweh shall be seen over them. His arrow shall go forth as lightning. This is the sign of Son of Man coming, flashing as lightning. The cherubim flashes lightning. And the Lord God, or Yahweh Aloheka, shall blow the trumpet. This is the last trumpet. And the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised, and shall go in whirlwinds of the south. So clearly, these context of these verses is talking about Christ coming in the clouds, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ on his white horse. Okay? Definitely you can see that. With that being said, the war that's described in the verses preceding these prophecies is talking about this present Gaza war. Now let's state this. This war we saw a couple years ago, it did flare up. There were a lot of missiles, but it wasn't a ground invasion. So we didn't announce this war just yet because it wasn't a ground invasion. It wasn't, it wasn't fully what we expect to see. But what you'll see here is that these cities are definitely the cities presently engaged in conflict. That is the major purpose of why we're telling you this and conveying this message. The burden of the word of Yahweh in the land of Hadrek and Damascus. Okay, Damascus. It is the same Damascus in the Bible as it is today as the capital of Syria. When the eyes of man... As all the tribes of Israel shall be towards Yahweh. Okay, the modern state of Israel is not all the tribes. It is Judah. It is Levi. But you will not hear anyone say they are the ten northern tribes as part of the modern state of Israel. This says clearly all the tribes, which it's talking about is the 144,000. They shall be towards Yahweh. And Hamath shall border thereby. Hamath, will show it to you on the map. It's in Syria. Tyrus, or Tyre, and Zidon. Though they be very wise. Tyre and Zidon is in Lebanon. Tyrus did build her house a stronghold and heaped up silver as the dust and fine gold as the mire in the streets. Okay. Beirut used to be the financial center of the Middle East. Okay. They were the banking center. Uh, before the destruction of fire that happened, and that destruction of fire is right here. Behold, Yahweh shall cast her out. He will um, smite her power in the sea. 
she shall be devoured with fire. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the big explosion that happened in the harbor of Beirut um, just a few years ago. We have videos that cover it. This is, by the way, part of our Armageddon playlist. <clears throat> Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Okay, Ashkelon is in the state of Israel presently. Now, what we begin to see is that some of these cities, Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, Ashdod, these used to be part of the Philistines, the Philistine cities that um, existed at the time of uh, this prophecy. But the Philistines uh, ceased to exist, and their modern fulfillment is the Palestinians. Now, some of the Palestinians, oh, the Palestinians are going to be in the Gaza Strip, but some of these cities that they invaded that we see in Scripture, they're in the state of Israel. So the prophecy is not necessarily talking about nation states, it's talking about the cities. The ancient cities would exist in the end of days once again, and there would be a war there. Okay, Ashkelon shall see it. Well, Ashkelon has a major prison, and many Palestinians are held there, and Hamas is trying to take it to free those prisoners to get more fighters. Gaza shall see it and be very sorrowful. Yes, Gaza, the very Gaza Strip, the very Gaza War, is in the scripture right here, clearly. We're going to see most of these cities in, uh, in Amos chapter 1 as well. Ekron, for her expectation shall be ashamed. Okay, Ekron is in the state of Israel. The king shall perish from Gaza. Okay, does this mean that the leadership of um, Hamas is taken out in some way? You know, we'll see. We'll watch. Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. Okay, Ashkelon is in the state of Israel and it is under, I believe, evacuation orders. Many of the border cities around the Gaza Strip have been evacuated and as we mentioned, we are anticipating a land war, boots on the ground, from Israel into taking the whole Gaza Strip. Um, that's, that's what we anticipate happening now. Okay, it's been approved, basically, this war through the state of Israel. Now it's just a matter of watching. All right. Ashkelon shall be not be inhabited it shall be evacuated a bastard shall dwell in ashdod ashdod is also in the state of israel it's a little bit north of ashkelon i'll show you all these um and i'll cut off the pride of the philistines so again this is talking about the philistines this is going to be the palestinians i'll take away the blood of his mouth and abominations between his teeth but he that remains he shall be for our god he shall be as a governor in judah okay so in the millennium Lord Jesus Christ will uh, divide up his kingdom to his leadership into the governors. Ekron as a Jebusite. Now, Ekron exists. It's in the state of Israel. Jebusite is the ancient Jerusalem. The Jebusites inhabited Jerusalem. And I will encamp about my house because of my army. Now, uh, here we are. Very simple, guys. Google Maps. You can see this is the Gaza Strip. This is the Gaza Strip. And over here, this is the West Bank. So there's been rumors that what they're trying to actually do is connect the Gaza Strip to the West Bank. Um, most of the weapons and missiles and is in the Gaza Strip. It's not in the West Bank. But there's more people and more fighters that could assist. So it, this is crazy to think this. But this is what they're attempting to do. So, Gaza, all right, Gaza shall see it. Um, north of Gaza, we heard about Ashkelon. So this is the border of the Gaza Strip. Then we get Ashkelon in the state of Israel. Ashdod, okay, we saw Ashdod mentioned. Okay, we saw Ekron. Here it says um, Kiryat Ekron. So there's Ekron. <laughs> um, these cities uh, exist amazingly. Now, once we go north... Okay, this state of Israel, now this is the border right here to Lebanon. And once we go to the border, there you can see clearly Tyre, okay, and then north of that, Sidon. Amazing, yes, the same cities that we just read about 
their same precise, precise location proven through archaeology Tyre in Lebanon okay we have um, Sidon in Lebanon and then we have this is uh, Beirut and then we begin to see the border here of um, Lebanon with Syria okay and then Hamath is here so um, what we did is we kind of we'll do a recap here we've kind of taken screenshots of of these and what we've done is circled them and then we'll look at them in the scripture all right so what we have here is uh, this one is Gaza, Ashkelon, and Ashdod. Okay, so we got the Gaza Strip going right here. North of it, Ashkelon. North of that, Ashdod. We see those in Zechariah 9 and Amos 1. And we have Ekron. Okay, then if we head a little bit north, we still can see them. Here's Jerusalem. Here's Amman, Jordan, capital of Jordan. Amman, we'll see that also. In when we read Amos chapter 1. But once we go north, then we begin to see Tyre and Zidon in Lebanon. Okay? And then once we go north, Tyre and Zidon, we get Damascus, capital of Syria, and then we get Hamath also in Syria. So these are all the places we would anticipate the war expanding into a conflict with Lebanon, into a conflict with Syria in some way. Um, these are all in the news at the present time. But we're just pointing out that as we um, read the scriptures, particularly what we're focused on is Zechariah chapter 9 and Amos chapter 1. So if this Bible will come up, um, we'll go to Zechariah, we'll go to Amos 1 next. Okay, we're just making this as clear and simple as possible. The Gaza War is an end of days war that happens. It's connected to Armageddon. Armageddon is in the whole world. It's not just one location. Okay, but this is a war in prophecy specifically detailed around the second coming of Christ when he comes on the white horse. This war would be a land invasion from the state of Israel into the Gaza Strip. Um, the thumbnail of the video, as you can see, it's a mosque that was destroyed in the Gaza Strip that was made to look like the Dome of the Rock. So the Muslims are rallying around what they believe is the desecration of the Alaska Mosque. That's part of this war. They chose Yom Kippur, okay, specifically... Um, November 6, 1973, that war, Yom Kippur, was an attack from Egypt and Syria simultaneously catching the state of Israel off guard. They launched this war, October 7th, 2023, on the eighth day of Sukkot that the Jews are celebrating. So they're doing the same thing. They're catching them doing the feast. The Israelis are caught off guard. But let's look at this war, okay? And again, we're saying it's Armageddon. So we're in Amos chapter 1, and here in verse 14, the shouting in the day of battle, okay? Um, he will kinder a fire. He will devour the palaces. Is the palace the uh, Alaska Mosque? Um, with shouting in the day of battle. So this is Armageddon. The tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Now, again, as we're saying, this is this is Armageddon. This is what the context of these scriptures is talking about. All right, now let me pull back up Amos um, chapter 1, and we're going to go to uh, verse 1. And when we do, we'll see that there's also a connection to the great earthquake. So that when this war happens, all right, it's connected to the seventh bowl when there was a great earthquake. So the words of Amos, who was among the herdsmen, concerning the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Now we know that 
during those days he says two days before the earthquake that's the great earthquake at the time of Uzziah so two years before the earthquake okay and we're anticipating that earthquake very soon what exactly this is is it the great earthquake in Turkey you know we're not saying we're just saying that we're in the time and then it says Yahweh shall roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem this is the same thing the trumpet blast that we just read in Zechariah 9 okay um, so he is coming this is the great day of the battle that we read about in the sixth bowl of Revelation chapter 16 and the inhabitants of the shepherd shall mourn um, the top of Carmel shall wither okay now let's get into the prophecies of the specific cities three transgressions of Damascus and of four I will not turn away the punishment there because they have threshed Gilead with the threshing instruments of iron I will send a fire into the house of Hazel and devour the palace of Ben Hadabad. And I will break the bar of Damascus. Okay. Again, we have shown you uh, Damascus, all right, which we see here. And, and that is one of the clear places in these prophecies. All right. Then we get the inhabitants of the plain of Avon and the house of Eden and the people of Syria all right so we would have uh, Syria be a part of this okay um shall go into captivity unto Kerr says Yahweh all right for thus says Yahweh the three transgressions of Gaza okay here we go the Gaza Strip I will not turn away the punishment there because they have carried away captive the whole captivity now this is speaking of the um captivity that hamas is doing by um taking hostages taking the israeli hostages from the uh places that they're attacking and they're taking captive the whole captivity they're taking the people captive into gaza for three transgressions of gaza why they carried away the captive the whole captivity uh, to de deliver them up to Edom and that's Jordan okay I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza okay well there's fire on the wall of Gaza that's what the um, wall of Gaza is what the Hamas they broke down the wall in many many places and that's how they began their invasion now we'll we're gonna have lots of developments guys I'm not gonna get into all of them this video the purpose of this is not to provide news it is to provide the fact that this is a prophetic war in the Bible and shall devour the palaces thereof and I will cut off the inhabitant of Ashdod okay we saw Ashdod Ashdod is going to be north okay of Ashkelon and we can see that that is also discussed here um, in Amos chapter 1 um, and him that holds the scepter in Ashkelon. So again, um, you know, these are the ancient Philistine cities, but it's talking about conflicts in these cities. And I will turn away my hand to Ekron. And Ekron is here uh, to the north and to the east of Ashdod, Kiriat Ekron. And the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. For three transgressions of Tyrus, all right, and four. So, in our graphic here, you can see Tyrus or Tyre, Lebanon. Um, for they delivered the whole captivity to Edom and delivered not. Uh, and remember not the brotherly covenant. So that's talking about Jacob and Esau. Esau is Edom. Now send a, a, a fire upon the wall of Tyrus. All right, so. When we see um, Tyre, you can see that is not far from the border of Israel. So there, we expect something to happen with Hezbollah that they would also be engaged in this conflict in the north of the state of Israel coming from Lebanon in the south of Lebanon at the border wall. Okay. Um, and then we get Edom. All right. 
he did not pursue his brother with the sword. He didn't cast out the pity. Okay. And I will send a, a fire upon Teman and shall devour the palaces of Basra. Then we get Ammon. All right, Ammon. Um, let's bring up Ammon. Let's see where we have one of these that is going to show us. Here it is. Amman, Jordan, the capital. All right. Three transgressions of the children of Ammon. Four, I will not turn away the punishment because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead. Now, uh, this isn't presently happening in Jordan, but this is, of course, the innocent civilians um, that are being just massacred in the state of Israel. Um, and he talks about here even ripping up the pregnant women. All right, and he will kindle the fire in Rabbah, and he shall devour the palaces thereof in the shouting in the day of the battle. Now, there is another passage I want to read, which actually gives us a more definitive detail of the prophecy and its outcome. Is, is this exact? We'll watch, we'll see. But we are here in another one of the minor prophets called Zephaniah, chapter 2. And we, we're going to start at verse 1, and it's gonna, we're going to stop at Moab, but, um, but basically we get the same cities. So we just want to read it. Is this uh, what happens? Is this the purpose that Yahweh has? He directs the affairs of men. That's what we're trying to say. He has written in prophecy exactly what will happen in the current events. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass in chaff, before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon you, before the day of Yahweh's anger come upon you. Seek ye Yahweh, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be that you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon a desolation. Okay, same things we have showed you numerous times. These cities, they shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. We just read all these cities, didn't we? Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast and the nation of the Cherethites. Um, the word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan. Okay, this is Canaan. This is uh, the land promised to Abram, the land of and the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy you that there shall be no inhabitant. The seacoast shall be the dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds of flocks. The coast shall be for the remnants of the house of Judah. All right. The remnant of the house of Judah, that's what it's saying, who's going to take th these cities in this war. And the houses of Ashkelon shall, be, shall lie down in the evening, for the Lord God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. Okay, so that gives us a little more insight than some of the other ones. We get the same exact cities, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron. Okay, uh, we get the Philistines, so... We're just watching, guys. We're just watching. The purpose of this is to show you that this war is definitely, Armageddon is definitely connected to the second coming of Christ. Um, this is part of our playlist on Armageddon. We fully expect Armageddon to be in the whole earth, and there will be hot spots. Okay, we have many of the hot spots are triggering multiple places, um, there are so many, it's hard to count. Um, but the one that is going to be in our face is in the Middle East. It's going to make Ukraine um, back burner. It is going to draw the world's attention to what's happening in the Middle East. Okay, So we're, keep, we're watching with these prophecies. The Son of Man is coming in the clouds. All right. So let's read what it said. And... Um, in Zechariah chapter 9, it gave us exactly what to do. What do we do in these, in these end, end of days? Okay. All right. 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you just with salvation, riding on his white horse. Glory to the Lamb. Amen.